The question that I get the most often as a pediatric radiographer is, are x-rays safe? And we'll talk about that today. The short answer to this question is no, x-rays are not considered safe at any capacity. So even if we're just doing a finger x-ray and there's very little radiation or even dental x-rays, they're still not to be considered safe. This is demonstrated on what we radiographers are familiar with as being a linear non-threshold graph. This graph demonstrates that there is no amount of radiation that can be considered safe and as you increase the dose of the radiation, then it increases the risk of negative effects happening. So why aren't x-rays considered to be safe? The risk that we are concerned about when dealing with x-rays is that an x-ray photon will interact with a part of your body that's called an atom that makes up the cells. And this mutation of the atom has the potential to become cancerous. Is this likely to happen? No, not likely. Our body is mostly made up of water, so the likelihood of a photon interacting with a water molecule is much higher than interacting with our DNA. Also, studies have had a really hard time demonstrating a link between modern diagnostic imaging resulting in cancer. We know that it exists because of our past and our history of radiation, but it is very hard to prove today. Another thing to keep in mind is that radiation exposure is a cumulative dose. And this means that even though you had an x-ray three years ago, the dose is still there in your body and we're just adding on top of that. So the x-ray that you get today, the x-ray that you get next week or next year, it compiles and it creates a cumulative dose over your whole life. So if we know that radiation is not safe and that there is a risk of negative effects happening later on, then why do we still perform x-rays? When a provider makes the decision to order a radiographic examination for the patient, they have already considered the risks versus benefits for that specific patient. So the information that they are obtaining from this radiographic examination is going to benefit the patient and their healthcare in the long run. If you have had an x-ray in recent years, you may or may not have been shielded with a lead shield throughout the duration of your exam. In the year 2021, the NCRP gave their recommendation to stop gonad shielding for abdominal and pelvic radiography. This recommendation makes sense to me personally because if you are thinking of the abdomen and the pelvic region, there is bony anatomy and there is soft tissue anatomy and the colon that you can see in a radiograph that can be obscured if you are not positioning the gonad shield properly. Also, they mention in their recommendation that females' ovaries are not always located in the same spot. So the likelihood of you actually covering the ovaries with a gonad shield properly is not going to be very accurate. In 2019, the AAPM recommended that all shielding for patients should be discontinued. And this is the recommendation that has been adapted for my hospital, and I don't necessarily agree with it. I understand their points, but I don't agree. They mentioned two major problems that shielding can pose on a patient whenever it's done improperly. One of these issues is covering up anatomy like we just spoke about. For those of you who are not familiar with x-rays, a lead shield is used to block the radiation from coming into contact with that body part and subsequently the image receptor that receives all of the radiation. When that happens, there's a big white area on the x-ray. If the shield is placed covering the anatomy that we need to see, then that area that the shield is covering will be completely white and you will not be able to see any bony or soft tissue anatomy underneath of it. When this happens and pertinent anatomy is covered, then it would result in us needing to do a repeat exposure, doubling the patient's dose from what it should have been. If you're careful with your lead positioning and you're being mindful of where it is in relation to what you're taking a picture of, then this shouldn't be an issue at all. The other main issue that they bring up is that the lead shield 
could negatively impact our use of the automatic exposure control function. On our wall bucky and our table bucky, we have these cells that are usually rectangular in shape and there's typically three of them. Those cells are responsible for keeping track of the amount of radiation that is being received by the image receptor, and then it will turn off the exposure whenever the expected amount is received for that particular exam. If a lead shield is covering part or all of that cell, then it will not allow for the radiation to penetrate the cell, and it will result in an overexposure of the patient. That's why we have backup timers, so it's not going to just keep exposing and keep exposing, but it will result in an overexposure regardless. And again, this is something to be mindful of as a radiographer, and it is our responsibility to ensure that the shield is not going to get into the patient's anatomy or cover up one of those cells. And instead of putting that responsibility onto the tech, and holding them accountable for providing good proper techniques and positioning and shield positioning, uh, they just said, we'll get rid of them. Technology has advanced so much that it is just a little amount of radiation that we're using, but if you're getting x-rays really frequently, then it adds up. So how can we keep ourselves safe, whether we're a patient or working in the field with x-rays? Radiographers are familiar with the three cardinal principles. These are time, distance, and shielding. Time is associated with the amount of time spent in a room with the x-ray exposure. So if you don't have to be in the room for an exposure, you should step out. If you are doing a fluoro examination or you are in surgery using fluoro, then you can use pulse fluoroscopy so that it's spurts of x-rays instead of a constant stream of x-rays. And you also need to be aware of the amount of time that you are spending using that fluoro. Most of the technology using fluoro has an alarm where it tells you like, okay, you've hit your five minutes, you need to start backing up off of the fluoroscopy. I mentioned stepping out of the room for time, but that also counts as distance. You need to put as much distance as possible between yourself and the x-ray tube. With mobile radiography, the rule is six feet. So you need to be at least six feet away from the tube whenever you're making the exposure. Even taking just a couple steps back during the exposure will dramatically reduce the amount of radiation that you're being exposed to. That's the inverse square law if you forgot. And then we have shielding. Just because it's becoming more common and acceptable to drop the shields from the patients does not mean that it's okay to go into an x-ray room without a shield as a radiographer. So just make sure that you are wearing your lead shield and your thyroid shield whenever you are in a room with a patient when an exposure is being taken. I hope that I didn't frighten anybody with this information and that you are able to gain some knowledge from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will try to address them as soon as possible. As always, stay safe, have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.